Welcome to episode 25 of my 2022 Training Diaries, the second last episode of this new series that I've been experimenting with throughout the season. Today I'm going to talk about how my recovery has been going since UTMB, and I'll also answer a few questions that I had about the race from last week's video. There were a few details that I skipped over, like which shoes that I ended up wearing that I'll cover here. And finally, I'll tell you about the rest of my plans for the season in terms of racing and adventures, as well as for my YouTube channel. My race had ended early last Sunday morning, so I did manage to get a good night's rest on Sunday night. And then on Monday, we pretty much spent the entire afternoon and into the evening at a spa right on the edge of downtown Chamonix. never know this place was there, but it was a little oasis with a beautiful panoramic view of the Mont Blanc Massif. And to be honest, I wasn't too sure at first when Audrey suggested it because it seemed a little bit pricey for basically a hot tub, but it turned out to be a lot more than that. There was a series of rooms with different types of baths and tubs offering a variety of treatments like hot cold therapy, steam saunas, and much more, along with several different pools with massage jets and beds for you to just nap outside on. Honestly, I think it's gonna be my new post-race recovery regimen. It really seemed to work wonders to help get the blood flowing and really just as a way to treat ourselves after such a hard effort. And I think it really helped to speed up my recovery as well. We got another good night's sleep that night before getting up early on Tuesday to fly back home here to Vancouver. It was a pretty long travel day, including a 10 hour flight from Zurich, but we made up most of the time with the eight hour time change. But crossing eight time zones comes with its own problems and definitely added to our post-race fatigue. There were a few things that we paid close attention to during our day of travel, as I always do. The first is to stay well hydrated and to eat, not just at prescribed meal times, but really kind of whenever I felt hungry. Because when you're changing time zones like that, you can't really just eat according to the local time. You need to eat based on the time zone that you're coming from, especially when recovering from a big race like UTMB where your metabolism is on overdrive. The most important thing though for long flights is to keep in motion as much as possible. And I always book an aisle seat for this reason so I can get up maybe once an hour or so without bothering anyone to walk around and maybe use the bathroom since as I said I'm also guzzling water and taking a lot of electrolytes while traveling. And lastly, I always wear compression socks for a long flight or drive, especially after an event where your legs are likely to already be a little bit swollen. You can get medical grade compression socks, which you might actually be able to get covered by some healthcare plans or some designed specifically for sport, which you could even use during a run. I'm planning to put together a dedicated video with travel tips like this, as well as how to pack your running gear to make sure that you get through security okay, especially when it comes to carrying things like poles and food products. So stay tuned for that. So as I said, we arrived home on Tuesday evening and I pretty much just took the entire rest of the week off. Unfortunately, you can probably hear it in my voice, I ended up getting a cold. I did do two rapid antigen tests, which both came back negative, and it was just a bad head cold, mostly with sinus congestion. But combined with my jet lag and the fatigue from the race, it hit me pretty hard. So I really just focused on resting this week with a bit of foam rolling and a lot of self-massage with my massage gun. I had this one here, the R1, sent to me recently from a company called Roll Recovery, which I would call a premium massage gun. And it was a great replacement for the cheaper one that we'd been using for a while, which was much larger and way louder. This one is quiet enough that I can use it while watching TV on the couch without driving Audrey crazy, and that was enough to even convince her to start using it as well. The lithium battery lasts up to seven hours and it is USB-C rechargeable, so if you're looking for a really high quality massage gun, then I'll link to this one below so you can learn more. Now I felt good enough by Monday here to head out for a paddle with Audrey in nearby Deep Cove. It was a holiday and it was a beautiful day, so it was pretty busy, but it was really nice to get back out on the water.
So going back to the race, there were a few things that I'd left out of last week's video, including which shoes that I used. So I started with the Solomon S-Lab Pulsar Soft Grounds as I'd planned. I'd actually worn these as a test while fast packing the route in early August over about four and a half days, and they worked out great for those efforts of up to about nine hours per day or around 42 kilometers. But I did find that my feet started to feel a little bit sore by around the halfway point of the race in Cormayeur where I had my drop bag. Now, I probably could have just finished in them, but I decided to play it safe and to change into the Solomon S-Lab Genesis instead. This is a brand new shoe in the S-Lab lineup, which I talked about a couple of weeks ago, that is designed specifically for longer distances, and they got me to the finish line just fine. I happened to be a beta tester for these shoes, so I knew that they would work well for me. And they also happened to be the shoes that Mathieu Blanchard, another Solomon athlete, wore, who finished second in the race, along with a bunch of other Solomon athletes. So they were definitely a popular choice for those that could get their hands on them. For poles, I had borrowed a pair of Likes from my friend Charles. Now these use a glove-like design, which easily hooks on and off of the pole, instead of a strap, similar to Nordic ski poles. Now, I've had my eye on these for a while, and I had tried them during a training run with Charles, and I absolutely loved them. So he offered to let me use them during the race as well. They're not only quicker to clip on and off, but I find that you actually get a bit more power using them because you get a bit more follow through and can more easily push off behind you. But unfortunately, I managed to break one near the top of the final climb during the race. Now, I guess you could say it couldn't really have happened at a better time, but now I've got to buy Charles a new set in addition to buying one myself, and they're quite expensive, much more than the black diamond carbon distance poles that I've used in the past. I'll plan on making a video specifically about poles at some point in the future as well. My legs have felt great all week, but you still don't want to rush back to running after a big effort like this. Now, I talked about my approach to recovery back in episode 16, following my race in the country of Georgia back in June. I tend to follow the advice of coach David Roche, who advocates one day of complete rest for every 10 miles raced, so 10 days of full rest following a 100 miler like this, followed by the same period doing mostly easy activity before finally returning to somewhat normal training while still limiting excessively long runs for some time. So we're talking about a few weeks at a minimum before getting back to training. So this week my plan is to get back to some light activity, including some hiking and easy running. And this coming Friday, we'll be heading to Whistler to volunteer at Whistler Alpine Meadows, a series of races put on by Coast Mountain Trail Running. That's the series that my friend Gary Robbins is the co-director of. And if you're planning on being at WAM this weekend, Audrey and I will be leading a shakeout run on Friday starting at 5 p.m. from the Solomon Store in Whistler Village. Just an easy 5k, so we'd love to see you there. As for the rest of the season, UTMB was definitely the last of my goal races for the year. But it looks like I'll be doing at least one more race, probably around the 50k distance, and likely in early December. I met a few race organizers while at UTMB who have invited me to join them abroad, so I'm just trying to decide which of these races to prioritize. But this will be more or less just a chance to do a bit more travel and to tell a fun story about one of these unique locations and races, not so much about the racing itself necessarily for me. So my training over the coming months is likely to be fairly unstructured and I hope to be able to prioritize going on a few adventures. September really is the best month here in British Columbia. It's not too hot, but the rain hasn't really started yet either that we tend to get in October and November. The snow has all melted in the Alpine, but most importantly, the mosquitoes are finally gone and there should be plenty of wild blueberries. So if you ever hope to visit Vancouver to go hiking or running in the Alpine, September is definitely the best month to do it. As you probably know, I've got a bunch of films that I'll be editing and publishing over the coming months. And I know that many of you don't necessarily use YouTube super regularly, where you're logging in every day or two to watch the latest videos in your feed from the channels that you subscribe to. Instead, you're sort of catching new videos when you can, maybe when you notice them being mentioned on other social media platforms. 
But if you want a better way to stay on top of my latest content, Audrey and I will be launching a weekly newsletter. At least it'll be almost weekly. We might skip a week if there's no video or when we're too busy racing or traveling, but our goal will be to send out an email pretty much every week where you'll get notified of any new videos or blog posts along with a few other features, including links to any special discounts from brands that we work with or from other online retailers. We'll also tell you about future trips we're hosting like our trip to Patagonia in March and this upcoming fast packing trip that we're hosting on the Tour de Mont Blanc next August. And we'll keep you posted as soon as those are launched. And we'll also include a few links each week to articles, videos, or podcasts from around the web about different running or outdoor related topics that have caught our attention that we think might interest you as well. So sign up in the link in the description and you'll start getting that as soon as we launch it, likely within the next few weeks. So next week will be my final episode of the series and it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna give you a behind the scenes look at how I make these videos, including my scripting process and some of the camera gear that I use to film here in my living room. And there might be a few things that surprise you. In fact, I'd like to conduct an informal poll right now. I wanna hear how many of you think that I use a teleprompter for these videos. So put your guess in the comments and I'll give you the answer next week. I'll also tell you about the kinds of things that I've learned from making these weekly videos and what my plans are for the series moving forward. So if you found this video entertaining or helpful, give it a like. Subscribe, of course, to be notified of new videos. And of course, subscribe to the newsletter as well if you'd like to start receiving that. And I will talk to you all next week in the final episode of my 2022 Training Diaries.